Hey everybody, Christy Glass here today with a special show my stash video. I'm going to show you my stash of knitting books and they are flanking me on either side. Each stack is about three feet tall. I'm sitting on a swing that has a weight limit, so I'm a little nervous because these books are hefty and I have quite a collection. I'm sitting out here on my back porch enjoying the sound of nature and planes. You can probably hear there's a plane. But this is one of my favorite times of year because I can hear the birds chirping, twittering away, and just reminds me about nature and life and um, brings me back to why I love knitting so much, which it really is about the fiber and where our fiber comes from and things like that. So I wanted to take you on a little journey today showing you my knitting books. And in no particular order, let's get started. Here are a few disclaimers. I'm sure I'm going to pronounce things wrong. I'm also not doing show notes, so I'm going to hold these up for you. If you're interested in this book, press pause on your screen and write it down. I also wanted to share a tip with you that many people don't know. If you have a Ravelry account, there is a tab called Library. And when you click on Library, you can enter in the book that you own. And then when you search for patterns and you, in the advanced search, Page, if you click in my library, it will show you patterns that you already own that you probably forgot you even had because they're within the covers of a book on your shelf. Let's get started. Knitting Comfortably, Carson Demers. I need to read this book. It has been sitting on my shelf for far too long. Some of you may know that I go to physical therapy to work on my knitting arm. And I'm looking at this and there is so so much information about the ergonomics of hand knitting. I mean, it is pages and pages long. We're up to almost 300 pages of information. So I'm gonna set a goal to read a little bit of this every day so that I can improve my knitting posture and be hopefully tension free when I knit. I have a trio here. This is Knit Sonic. So you probably saw Felix on my YouTube channel. This is the playbook, which I think this is my favorite one. Yes, because what she does is she takes photographs and then she turns them into patterns. You can see on the front cover, the sewer photo and the pattern that results. So this one is so amazing. It's the playbook. Then there is the source book and it's similar. It has, it, it just, what I love about the source book is it shows how she takes the photograph and then she experiments with it. And so she will admit to, I didn't like how this one turned out. I loved how this one turned out. It's very much a process and so informative. And then there is the coloring companion where you can do some coloring. Modern Heritage Knits. This is from Christina Dene, which you probably saw on my YouTube channel. And her designs in here are so beautiful. Here's the book. Let's see if we can pick one out to show. <clears throat> like this one. Look at this gorgeous pullover. It's well thought out. She's in Asheville and you can get a sense for that here. I don't, I mean, maybe she didn't shoot it there, but it just has sort of this shabby chic, rustic, look and it's just beautiful modern heritage knits field guide to knitted birds by arnie and carlos i think i picked this up when i met them yeah it says to christy glass knits stricka hilson and i love it because you can choose what bird you want to knit and it's presented kind of like a field guide and arnie and carlos are so much fun and i just long for the day when i can dig into knitting a bird I mean, how much fun, how much fun would that be? More sensational knitted socks. This was recommended to me by a friend. I was watching her knit socks with envy. I just thought, how are you doing that? This is back when I only knitted scarves and was dabbling in hats. And she said, you can knit anything. And she said it to me over and over again for years and I did not believe her. And she recommended this book because it has all of these different charts and everything you need to know with sizing and different heel turns and toes. And so I think I got this on probably Amazon because this is from the Columbus Metropolitan Library and it must've been some reject, but glad I have it. Knitting, color, structure, and design by Allison Ellen. 
some of these books I don't I don't know where they came from I don't know if I purchased them if they were gifted to me this looks mostly like a sort of source book of stitches um, let's see if there's any proper patterns in here like look at this shell jacket I honestly don't know but this is a good source and then it has a few fun patterns in it ruggedness Andrea Rangel I got this book after I went to my first TNNA and I actually cast on one of the sweaters and ended up frogging it because I didn't like how the yarn was behaving but it looked really fun um, let me see if I can find it for you it's what I like about it is she has these wardrobe principles so this is the one that I cast on it's the base layer so it's that sweater that you can throw on kind of like a thermal anytime you want just an extra layer and then there's two other pieces in here that I really like that I want to show you. I really want to make this. I just should. I should just make this. This is the um, this is the textured wisp vest, and the yarn is bulky weight. And I have some. I have some bulky weight yarn. So I think I'm going to work on getting this knit up because I love. I love bulky because it goes so quickly, and this is really fun. This is a really fun pattern. And then the other one I wanted to show you is this Surging River Wrap. This might also be bulky. I'm always drawn to a little, a little bulky something something. Let's see if there's another picture here. Yeah, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? So this is Rugged Knits by Andrea Ringo. This is Fairy Knitting, 14 Tales of Love and Magic, and this is cousin duo Alice Hoffman and Lisa Hoffman. So Alice Hoffman is an author and knitter, I believe she knits. And Lisa Hoffman is a knit designer. And we had a wonderful interview that you hopefully saw on this channel. And what's so fun is that all of the patterns have context with a fairy tale. And that is such a fun way to frame your knitting journey. When you have lost your mojo, for example, and you just need a little something to get you going, this would be a wonderful book to start with. I Knit Paris, or shall I, shall I say Patty. This is the second, I think, book from the One More Row Press. They did I Knit New York first. And I know they're working on some other books, which is very exciting. And this is so fun because not only do they have patterns and local dyers and designers, but they also have information about Paris in here, which I wish I had had this book or at least called Kathleen Danes before I went to Paris for my own little knitting excursion I would have learned a lot but look how beautiful that is just like I knit New York there are several designs that are inspired by the architecture in the city and things like the um, <clears throat> oh gosh I'm terrible at French I'm even worse at French this is like the um, oh, I've been to it you know what I'm talking about <laughs> They're called the, the Garden a la France, the, the French garden socks. And they're inspired by this park that I actually went to and sat on those chairs. So very, very fun. Again, for the context of you know knitting something with purpose or with sort of a sense of place or story, very fun. This is a great book. This is Big Yarn, Beautiful Lace Knits by Barbara Benson. And I really highly recommend this to anyone who wants to start knitting lace but feels really intimidated by lifelines, frogging back, or mistakes. Because what's wonderful about every single one of these projects is they're big enough that you can see what you're doing. So many times with lace, I feel like I can't see what I'm doing. I don't know if this is right. And so the other nice thing about this is there are small projects and there are big projects. So you can kind of go through it one project at a time and get a sense for lace. So for example, this would be a very simple lace pattern and it would give you a sense of yarn overs and where is that supposed to land and what is that supposed to look like um, all the way up to this this would be a little more complicated possibly but I love the scale I'm actually going to take a look at this because I have some bulky yarn that would be really wonderful with one of these designs okay look at this one how cute so I recommend this for anyone who wants to tackle lace in their knitting journey, check this book out. Loopy Mango Knitting, this is their new book. And I love this because Loopy Mango usually does not, look at this back cover, hello. 
Look at that outfit. Loopy Mango usually only gives you a pattern if you purchase their yarn, so it can be a little tricky if you're interested in something they have, but you maybe don't wanna buy their yarn or you wanna use yarn you already have in your stash. So what's great about this book is you can take your bulky yarn and do one of their patterns without necessarily buying new yarn. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that you can hold several strands of yarn together at a time to achieve a bulky weight. So if you if you have just like a ton of yarn in balls that you think, I just wanna donate this or trash it, I want you to consider combining them all together, just sort of haphazard and go until they run out and then add a new ball in and approach making a bulky project. Like this sweater would be so good doing that. I mean, all of these would. They're all they're all chunky and bulky. What I also love about this is there are very small projects that you can do with that same technique I was talking about, or get some of their yarn. And there are bigger ones too. So, like here's a small hat. So this is really fun to have on your shelf when you just want to stash dive or have something very fast. I have a small stack of the field guides from Mason Dixon Knitting. They've actually gifted me several, some digital, some paper. I give them away sometimes on my Patreon uh, giveaways, but what is so fun about these field guides, if you haven't heard about Mason Dixon Knitting, they have a wonderful website, it's Ann and Kay. They made friends over the internet through knitting years and years and years ago, and they have a few other books out, but this is their latest endeavor, these field guides. And so this is number one, and it's usually a, just a tiny little booklet with featuring, usually it's featuring one designer. This one has three, this one has one. So maybe they got a little more, uh, this this field guide number two has three different designers. So I guess it depends on which, which field guide you have, but the last few that have come out, they've really focused on just one designer. So it gives it kind of a more cohesive, small publishing, vibe and so, but inside in addition to the patterns there's usually like a recipe like this has something called magic cake and they have um, usually a few articles as well so it's just a really fun it's just a really fun publication to look forward to and when you have them all on your shelf they'll stack up so nicely with their little numbers very cute I wasn't I wasn't sure if I was gonna show magazines oh here's one more field guide this was the Jen Geigley one. I wasn't sure if I was gonna show magazines, but I don't have that many, so I'll just make a mention of them, even though this is really supposed to be about knitting books. So I have, I don't have them all here, but I have several copies of Pom Pom Magazine. And Pom Pom Magazine is, I think, quarterly. Let's see, Pom Pom Quarterly, yeah. They have knitting, crochet, crafts, fashion, art, and food. I would say it's heavy on the knitting. And it's just beautiful. The, the job they do is so, so nice. The paper feels really great. They have um, really beautiful models all the time. They have a wide variety and diversity of models, which is really appreciated, especially in the knitting world when we're knitting clothes for ourselves. And they really do have such stylish patterns. I mean, I'm just looking at this. How cute is that little bag? And this was the summer stripes issue. So just really fun uh, to consider subscribing to. You can do digital or paper or both. This is a booklet and I showed this in my crochet book. Um, my crochet, let's see if we can find some together. This is do totally disorganized, so just, just roll with it. I showed this on my crochet video, some Rowan publications, and this is how they publish. So it kind of feels like a magazine, kind of not. And the reason I have these is because I was looking for a specific pattern on Ravelry and the pattern was within the walls of these publications. This one I believe was gifted to me because there was a problem with my order and the uh, person offered me a few free pattern books. So like I loved, love, love, love this piece right here. And so when she offered me, I just looked up patterns that I liked and then chose those um, books. So there's one, the Lima collection. And then this one I got intending to knit something in here and I, and, and I spent so long looking for the perfect pattern and then I ended up not doing it. But I actually like a lot of the patterns in here. So the one I was looking for to, to do was this Gypsy by Martin Story. And 
ended up not doing it. I ended up just sort of designing my own dress. But I also love this one, which is the Curio by Marie Wallen. And then there's one more that has caught my eye in here. You guys, I'm never gonna live long enough to knit everything I wanna knit. This one, this is Hobo. That is so cute. So these little booklets are treasure trove of patterns. Okay, here's more modern top-down knitting by Christina McGowan. There must be also a modern top-down knitting and just looking at the back, yes, I wanna make those. Mm -hmm. I want to make those. And I love top-down, so I don't know, I don't remember buying this book. I really, really don't know where this came from. This is cute, look. Fox in the snow. Isn't that cute? I love, I love that little bit of interest in a pattern. I love this too. So that's more modern top-down knitting. The mindfulness in knitting, oh, this is so sweet. This is from a friend, Leslie, and she gave this to me because we were doing mindfulness in knitting for book club. And it's just a beautiful, um, it's just a beautiful book with meditations on knitting and it's not patterns. I don't, I don't think it's patterns, but it's just a beautiful thing to sort of read through, especially when you're just thinking about how beautiful and wonderful knitting is in your life and the role it plays and it would be a wonderful gift for a knitting friend. Melanie Berg shawls. I believe this book is in English and German, which is so wonderful because German is Melanie's uh, first language. And these shawls are so beautiful, so accessible. My daughter actually knitted the Solaris here. See it right there. And I love the photography and the presentation, how it's just all the same. Each page, it's the model looking in profile, holding the shawl, and it's all about the work, not about the models at all. And so if you're really into shawls, you have to have this one in your collection. I went to Iceland and was gifted this book. And these are sisters, oh my gosh, this pram on the back. Yes, that's so Iceland. These are uh, Maka and Anna, and they have these gorgeous patterns in here of knitting with Lopi. It is in Icelandic, <laughs> but there are charts. So if I could figure out how to put together a raglan sweater, I can use the charts here. And it is rare to find an Icelandic knitting book, so that is a treasure. This is Knit Speak, and I believe that I won this in the New York City Yarn Crawl Basket. I got so many awesome items in that basket. So this says on the back, pattern language demystified, finally. And there's even a ruler on the back, which is nice. This just looks like a tiny little go-to guide to possibly travel with if you're having any troubles. Just a little reference book. And of course I love that it's pink. When bad things happen to good knitters, an emergency survival guide, don't cast on without it. I think this is all about problems. And a friend gave this to me as well. So it's just another quick reference book that you can have in your arsenal. The next stack, I actually know that this is sort of an organized stack here. These are all like charted knitting patterns. So this is a Barbara Walker, the third treasury. And I did not know who Barbara Walker was or what she was about when I got this book. I don't even remember when I got it, but it's true. There's just so many, I have several doggy eared um, charts here. And I think I was just curious about learning a new technique or wanting to apply something to something else. I have this vest that maybe you've seen me wear. It has it's basically like a sampler because it has color work on one panel and a pattern on the other and so I'm sure I was looking through this book to find those patterns. And here's another one, 400 Knitting Stitches from Potter Craft. So if you want to make a stack of coasters, if you want to make a patchwork blanket, if you want to make dishcloths, this is the place to do it and you have a chance to practice a knitting technique and understand the language of knitting better when you do something like this. Here's another one, Cables and Errands by Interweave Press, edited by Erica Knight. Again, this is just a bunch of different stitch patterns. Okay, here are the big reference books. I have the Vogue Knitting Knitopedia, which I got in that New York City yarn crawl 
Win years and years ago before I was doing my YouTube channel. This is a beautiful book with lots of information on sheep and knitting and just anything you can think of. And it's alphabetized, so you just go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So it's like a, it's more like a diction, it's more like a nictionary, nictionary, nictionary. And then here is their new one, the ultimate knitting book. And I feel like I have the small version of this too, which it'll pop up in the pile. But this is the newer one, the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Knitting Book. It's it's so beautiful and so big, and the pictures are great. the 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 um, the font is great. Look, it's in color. It's it's a beautiful reference book to have in your arsenal. And I have used these books because sometimes I don't have the YouTube. Sometimes my my internet isn't working, or sometimes I'm just don't want to get on the screen. I just want to look it up. And so I do actually use these books. This is R.E.D. The Rescue Endangered by Design. And this book is so beautiful. It's like a coffee table book meets a knitting book. They have these gorgeous photographs of actual endangered species and information about them. And then right alongside, they have patterns inspired by the endangered species, and they're they're really clever and creative. I want to show you, and it's all kind of intermixed together. So you'll you'll see a pattern, then you'll see a few pages about the animal, the chimpanzees in here. That was my favorite animal when I was a girl. So like, look at how cute this is. Oh, the other thing is they have sizes for adults and kids. So this is the my iguana friend sweater. How adorable is that? So cute. And then I wanted to show you, okay, everyone loves Tuna on Parade. So cute. So the, the design ranges, it's broad because there's a variety of designers and it ranges from like whimsical and fun to serious fashion. I'm kind of obsessed with this one for a little kid too. Scale up, use all of your indie dyed yarn for that. And then one more, where, is, where did it go? Oh well, you'll just have to explore yourself, but that is a gorgeous book. <gasps> We're done with the first stack. <laughs> Take a break. Okay, next stack. Actually, I, I wanted to pop this one in because this is crochet designs that I missed out on my other crochet video. This is the Winter Crochet Collection by Marie Wallen, and I knitted, or I, I crocheted a sweater out of this, and then my copy got drenched in water somehow. And one of you sent me a new one, so thank you. This is another book for bulky knits, We Are Knitters. So if you have bulky yarn in your stash and you want a quick project or you want a quick knit to give to someone, this book is for you. They're another company that it's hard to get their patterns without getting a kit. So it is interesting that they have decided to let a few of their patterns go into the world. This is a really cute, cardigan I wanted to show you. Looks like it has a mix of maybe mohair and the big wool right there with a little stripe effect. It's called the tribunal cardigan. And at the beginning they have a lot of how to knit information. So this would be a good book for someone who's interested in learning to knit and doesn't know how yet. Harry Potter Knitting Magic. This is pretty new and it's so cute. In fact it's funny because it's inspired by the the film and the books, I believe. Like this gorgeous, um, the Beau, Beau Baton's magic capelet is a very literal knitting pattern straight from the movie. And as you watch the movies, or at least as I watch the movies, I see even more. Like there could be so many different volumes of this Harry Potter book because any sweater that shows up in in the movie could be recreated for this book. This is sweet. This is the Wizarding Transportation Scarf with different patterns that go with the platform, nine and three quarters, and I'm loving the Hedwig pattern as well. This, here's some more mode. This is the Mode at Rowan um, book. This is the Big Wool patterns, and I knitted a sweater from here, the Moon Sweater. And all of them are just so cozy. And I'm obsessed with this jacket. Magpie, Home Bodies, and Nomads. I found this book, I don't even know how. I think that I just tagged a sweater that I loved. 
searching for a sweater on Ravelry and it was in this book, so that means I bought it. Here's the sweater. It's by Cerulea Rose. I cannot wait to read this. It's Handy Woman by Kate Davies. She had a brain event and had to relearn life and she is the designer and it's going to be such a good book. And there's even um, a little sort of funny pattern in the front of tortoise in the hair. So I'm guessing that is a big theme of what she's writing about. Now you can hear the lawnmowers out here. This is Warm Hands, brought to you by Jeanette Sloan and Kate Davies. So there are 15 fresh designs for your hands. Like, look how cute is that? These would be really, really fun gifts. This is great for holiday knitting. It's wonderful when you get a new coat and you, you need a little pop of color, something to keep you warm, and good stash busters. Love it. Okay, this one is the um, S. Charles Collection 22 Unique Modern Designs, Taki Stacy Charles. And I definitely hunted this down for a specific pattern that I wanted to make. It was this one right here. So I found it on Ravelry, and then I had to go searching for the booklet, and I found it. And here it is. <laughs> Amazon is your friend, or Google. Okay, this is Vintage Styles for today from Lion Brand. This is knitting and crochet. So if you want something inspired by days of yore, this is your book. This is actually a sweater that I was considering knitting for Jason, the ski sweater. And there are lots of different, um, there are lots of different options in here, all inspired by a different era. Like, And what I love about it is there's a photo like an inspiration photo from the past that they pair with the modern photo. I don't want to give away the pattern, but you can kind of see it here. Isn't that cute? This I got in the giveaway from the Yarn Crawl. This is Shibui Textures by Kristen Ford and Sarah Morris. So I don't know if Shibui is still putting out booklets like this, but it's kind of got like a Rowan vibe where they have various patterns you can do with their yarn. This is the Minnesota 52 and you saw these gals on my channel. Ori and Megan, there they are. And the photographs are by Gail Zucker, which she's done several of these. I should have been pointing that out as I go. But this just has so many fun patterns in it and a few of my favorites. I love this snow thank you. Snow thank you. And the Nanny hoodie. And one more that I have tagged here is the Fall Come Back Now shawl. So cute. All right, Margot uh, Sabati, she is one of the sisters in the sister act for the Wooliers, and she has actually a lot of different pattern books. Here's two that she gave to me. One is Winter White Knits, and the other is um, A New Perspective on Classic Knit Hats. Both of these are really good for your collection, especially I love the idea of having just a hat book that you can pull out when you need a hat for a certain weight of yarn because she has a variety of weights in here. And then this one is just so nice because Margot has such a wonderful style. And Elegant Winter White, I mean, it's just so wearable for those of you who don't like color. I not a winter white person, but so many people are. And the styling on here, I'm loving this fur bom bomber hat though. I love it so much. <laughs> I love that. So it's just wonderful if you want pieces in your wardrobe that you will go to over and over again. Just Like Me Knits, so cute, look at that. I think I picked this up because of, yes, this little hooded sweater, adorable. Guys, I used to have small children, but they got, they got big, so I, I missed it, I missed my chance. And then I think that this is really sweet too. It's a little ballerina sweater. Getting there, you guys. Okay, this is Simple Color Knitting by Erica Knight. I don't, I don't remember receiving this book, where it came from. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh, yes. Look at this sweater. Mm-hmm. Yep. Love that. There's, her books are really, really well put together. I just finished a crochet pattern of hers, and I, I had a wonderful experience. And she has a lot of different, um, what are these called? 
swatches in here as well. This is Whisper 21 Designs by Kim Hargraves. I think I got this in the, in the New York Yarn Crawl winning basket. All of her designs are in gray, black, or white, it looks like. And she just has some really wonderful basics. And she kind of pushes the envelope a little bit. This is very, very sassy. Love that. This is adorable. It's got that little retro vibe. And it is nice to see garments and, and the pictures in the black and white, like neutral of that, because you can just sort of apply whatever color you think will go onto that palette. So this is a nice presentation. Okay, here's I Knit New York. And I got to visit while they were shooting these photos with Gail Zucker and so much fun. I have this one. I have the yarn all picked out for this and I just need to start it. This is Jane Jacobs. Love that by Kristen Kapoor. And then I really love this Rockefeller Center as well by Zandi Peters. Everything in here is so well thought out. If you are into lace and architecture, you have to check out 42nd and Lex by Kathleen Dames. Very fun book. Squares and Frills Maggie Knits. Okay. <laughs> this is another one that I hunted down because I was attracted to certain patterns. This is one. I don't know if I'll ever make it, but there it is. And then... <laughs> This one, because I love the peplum. Isn't that cute? Squares and frills, magnets. Here is patchwork knitting, and this I, I purchased. I had to hunt it down because I wanted to explore about this, like what's going on here, like what is happening with all this. And I don't know how I got down this rabbit hole of patchwork. It was probably during that Eddie Redmayne sweater that Julia Farwell, Farwell Clay was working on. And I'm just trying to figure out how does this work? How can I make these patchwork situations? So that's that book. Oh, this is a gorgeous book by Bristol Ivy, Knitting Outside the Box. It's so well done. This is by Pom Pom. And she writes a lot about her knitting and she's so smart and where she's going and then there are patterns and there are charts and it's just a beautiful book to have in your collection. I know many of you have this and she has a second one too. Okay, this is The Yarn Girl's Guide to Simple Knits, Julie Carls and Jordana Jacobs. I don't, I don't remember getting this book but I have some things doggy-eared. Let's see what they are. Oh, here we go, The Weekend Warrior, yes. And... Ooh, baby, very cute. Yep, I can see myself making both of those. Here is Drop Dead Easy Knits. This is by Gail, Mary Lou, and Kristen Kapoor. And I have interviewed all three of those ladies. And what I love about this book, I mean, there's wonderful designs. All of the designers are so good. There's a wide variety of gifts that take a variety of time. So you can go big, you can go small. And then what I love about this is they have this feature within the pattern where it says you need to slow down here or pay attention here it's they'll say constant they'll say concentration zone and cruise control so cruise control is when you've sort of gotten through all of the hard bits of a pattern and then you can just kind of knit away and have your knit night and so I love that feature this is sweater girls Madeline Weston and Rita Taylor these are vintage inspired designs and I don't know if I will ever knit a sweater on size two needles but if I want to, I have the book for it. I'm obsessed with this. How cute is that? So cute. Okay, this I bought at uh, Webb's. It's the Merino Collection. I believe this is by Arnie and Carlos. Maybe it isn't. But I feel like it is. I don't know how I find out. But anyway, I loved this pattern. And they have a variety of projects in here, sweaters, scarves, that all have this like color work going on. This is Jersey Shore Knits 2 Beach Dreams by Zandi Peters. I think she gave this to me. And she has such interesting, fun 
patterns they just kind of blow your mind and what you make is so amazing there's also some recipes in here this is classic elite yarns avenue so i think that is a yarn line and then they have patterns that go with it so i like when the pattern companies come out with these little booklets to support their yarn it's so smart okay here's subversive socks you might have seen this before cooperative press was doing a reprinting of these for the maryland sheep and wool festival in 2020 and it's just a really fun thing to have in your collection especially if you're into socks this might motivate me to make some <laughs> and then doomsday knits which was actually just featured in the new york times uh article this past spring during covid 19 they were talking about the uprising of knitting and how people are just getting into it because of the quarantine and some of these really fun um, doomsday inspired patterns. This one's called Ozone. Here's another vintage fashion knitwear. I think my sister gave this to me and I love this book because it's more of a source book. It's not patterns, it's just it's just inspiration. So every single decade is represented in here and they show photographs from runways, they show ads, and then actual pieces from the era. Like, I think this is the 80s and look how cool that sweater is. So every single decade is represented and if you just need a little inspiration to get you going, You just you go to this book, Vintage Fashion Knitwear. I love it. It's forward is by Kay Facet, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, we have Garter Stitch Revival, and I believe this was gifted to me, or I was, I was introduced to it by um, Jesse of Yarn Over New York. There's adorable Argyle socks in here. Loving this uh, braided poncho. And I think the idea of this garter stitch revival is that it's a lot of garter, which can be so nice. <laughs> so if you're working on a, a pearl heavy project right now, you might want to pick this up and get your garter stitch on. Cute is that? Very fun. This is In the Footsteps of Sheep, Tales of a Journey Through Scotland, Walking, Spinning, and Knitting Socks by Debbie Zawinski. So this is going to be patterns, it's going to be essays and photographs from Scotland. So anyone who's really interested in this journey and maybe doesn't have a chance to go to Scotland themselves, this would be a good book for them. Um, it's a lot of writing and photography, and then I love how every once in a while there's just a little knitting pattern, like here's a knitting pattern for some sheep on your socks. The Knitted Teddy Bear. If you wanna make that special heirloom, I recommend this book. There are different ways of making your bear. They have sewn limbs, they have um, already attached limbs, they have clothes for the bear. Very, very sweet. It is fun to make knitted toys, and it is a skill you might want to have in your back pocket. The Manly Art of Knitting, it's actually a really funny book. I think this was first published in the 70s, and then they had a reprinting, yeah, 1972. They had a reprinting in 2014, and it just, it's very straightforward. This is stockinette stitch, and it teaches how to knit, and I think there are some really fun patterns in here. Like I'm loving, loving this rope hammock. I want to make that. Knitted cl knitting clothes kids love. Knitting clothes kids love. I don't know. Is that the right? Is that the right grammar? Please tell me. I'm sure I purchased this for a reason. I have many pages dog-eared. So like I'm loving this hat. I'm obsessed with these. And yes, the bracelet casings. Mm -hmm. The Project Knitwell has The Comfort of Knitting, which is a how to knit guide for caregivers and families. I think it's published by Lion Brand. And it's just a little booklet that you may want to consider 
gifting to someone maybe who's going through a hard time maybe there's um, a long-term illness happening and you want to gift some yarn and needles and a little booklet this would be good for that this is yarn play by Lisa Shobana Mason and I end up with these books I'm telling you because I found one pattern that interested me so let's see yes the Sloan sweater vest there's a theme here I think I need to make myself a sweater vest, you guys, because I keep finding them doggy-eared in books. And this everything striped sweater, yep, that's, that's what I'm about, making my own fabric out of what I already have. So I need to get back to that. Brooke Nico, this is lovely knitted lace, oh, someday I'm going to get good at lace, and I think Brooke Nico is the one to take me there. So here's the orange crush beret. Into that bird and this is so beautiful look at that that is called um, the Cam camellia dolman look at that can you imagine making that so pretty and speaking of brook nico i have had this noro lace i think brook nico is the i don't know if she does all of them or just some of them. Okay, but you guys, I I got this book because I wanted to make this, all right? So much. Okay. I got the exact yarn. It's right here. I've had this in my stash forever. I have the yarn. I started it and I was so off and I had to frog the whole thing. And I think this might have been before I knew about stitch markers, placing each lace section with a stitch marker. And so I frogged it, but I still think I should make this. I mean, this is back before, look you guys, all of my yarn is in a ball. I didn't even have a ball winder or anything. So this needs to be resurrected because this piece is a stunner. And this is from Nora Lace. Almost done. Okay. Weekend wraps, 18 quick knit cowls, scarves, and shawls. So I'm trying to decide, it says quick knit. So I think that this is meant to be something you do on a weekend. I think you could probably focus and get this done. I love this getaway poncho. And then I wanted to show you this one. Oh yes, the North Winds wrap, so cute. And look how they belted it, love. And one more. The bias cable and lace stole. Isn't that pretty? I'm not sure where that <laughs> book came from. Okay, knitted gifts. More last minute knitted gifts. When it says more, I'm assuming that means this is the second book. And it says to Christy on her birthday. And I can't tell who signed it. But thank you, whoever gave this to me on my birthday. Um, love these baskets so much and I love the idea that yeah you could probably whip that up for someone and give it as a gift or put the gift in that basket I mean look at this lovely set of coasters you could give someone yeah this is a good book oh look there's another bulky pullover sweater <laughs> oh I am a one-trick pony apparently and then I love this idea so good just save your scraps so you can do that for a gift. Gift packaging, you know? I do have a few Vogue magazines in my stash and I have them because I, I like specific patterns in there. So I don't subscribe to Vogue Knitting Magazine because I just, I'm not, a, I'm not like a magazine subscription person, but I will buy it when I like or want a certain pattern in it. This is Coastal Knit. And this is, this is, I believe this is done, yeah, a collaboration between friends on opposite shores. So Alana Dacos of Never Not Knitting and Hannah Fettig of Knitbot, which I love Knitbot, by the way. I think this was gifted to me also in that winning basket. This is so beautiful because it has really nice inspiration that goes with the pattern. I like when they put that in the books. Shell Creek Road, and then this is the cardigan that came out of Shell Creek Road. Isn't that pretty? 60 Quick Cowls. I know I purchased this because I was trying to 
figure out that Eddie Redmayne Prada sweater. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. But it was this awesome, like, patchworky sweater from, it's been several years now. And there was this one cowl that kind of imitated it a little bit. And I wanted to see if I could figure it out. And now I'm not finding it. But this is a really good book to have if you, again, want to make something quick, a gift, holiday knitting, wide variety, really fun. This is called Farm to Needle Stories of Wool. And it's like kind of an embossed sheep on the cover there. Maybe you can see it. This was given to me um, at Tolt. And it's just a beautiful book about farming and just the industry and there are some patterns in here. So if you like to geek out on like when I go on farm tours and things, you'll enjoy this. I don't know if this is for sale or how you get this, but it is called, like here's, here's a pullover pattern, but it is called Farm to Needle Stories of Wool. Here is a sense of place a collection by Andrea Mowry and recipes by Anna Brones. And this is from Tolt Yarn and Wool. Did you know that Andrea Mowry has these patterns with Tolt? So here's the Oxbow cardigan. How cute are they? Look at that little family. And this is kind of, again, like that little booklet that goes specifically with yarn. And then there are some beautiful recipes in here too. So, a little collection. And last but not least is the Morehouse Farm Merino Knits book. And I just finished a project using Morehouse Farm yarn and it is so soft and beautiful. And these patterns are so, they have so much whimsy and there's lace and there's bulky because they have all the range, all the range of Merino there. And the patterns are made by the, um, the wife and she has passed away and it's, it's a big tragedy to them and for them. And so this is a nice way to have it memorialized um, in this book. And there's lots of photographs of the sheep in here as well. So it's kind of a, an everything book. It's about the farm and I love this sweater for the, for the babies look. How cute is that? So this is a fun book to have in your collection as well. Oh my gosh, I have been talking for so long. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed it because I, I didn't even realize I had all of this in my library. Hey everybody, as I was going to edit this video, I realized that a few of the books that I was capturing had no audio. So here I am showing you the Knitting Mochi Mochi book. And I had Anna, who is the designer, on my channel for an interview. I've done a lot of her minis, and here these are minis and I think some medium scale mochis. Really, really fun if you want to knit some toys. And then here is the Icelandic Hand Knits book that I got from Helene Magnuson. I visited her studio while I was in Iceland. This is her. And I actually knit my first Lopi sweater from one of her patterns. And I don't know what I'm saying, but it must have been really funny. There's Icelandic Hand Knits. And then here is the Rhinebeck sweater. This is Isolde and Friends. So there are 12 patterns and there are all her friends on the back, Isolde and all her friends. And inside, one of my favorite patterns, which I hope to knit one day, is by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And I believe the pattern is called Jenny at the Fair, but here's one called Aunt Fred. That's so cute. She was on, that designer was on the Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater video, I think maybe last year, maybe two years ago. Here's Jenny at the Fair. And I have some Romney picked out for that, so. Those are a few more books that I found. Bye. Thank you as always for sitting with me and communing about knitting, one of our favorite things. And I will see you next time on Christy Glass Knits. Bye.